Hiya, I'm Ariane. My pronouns are she and her. You may notice my voice is generated by software. That's because I cannot speak. It's the result of selective mutism, which in my case is caused because I'm autistic. It's complicated. It's temporary, probably, but maybe out of service for a couple of months. It's happened before, although not for this long a period of time. I used to be able to hide it by simply not speaking on a day where it happened. But I can't do that when it lasts this long. So far, I've been nonverbal for one and a half months. I've kept doing my job during all this and want to share what I have learned from this in my job. Stephen Hawking is awesome. He also uses a speech synthesis device and he posted online on his setup. It is well worth a read. Stephen Hawking gives a lot of lectures. I took a page from how he prepares for them in preparation for this talk. What he does is he writes the lecture in advance. Then, when giving the lecture, he selects a paragraph at a time for what he wants to say. For this talk, I do the same. Lots of people, when they hear me for the first time, tell me I sound just like him. I get it, it's a new experience. But you're not the first person to say it. I hope you will speak to me after this talk if you have questions or just to say hi. So, in the interest of skipping the part where you will tell me I sound just like him, to it right now. I sound better. <laughs> Which brings me to how I talk. Text-to-speech engines are notorious for not handling intonation. Whether I'm asking a question or making a statement, it sounds pretty much the same. So I have to put in extra work to get my intention across. For example, suppose you're asking someone if they want tea. You can ask tea with inflection going up to make it sound like a question when you're offering someone tea. Or you can say tea in an excited manner to indicate how happy you are to finally have some tea. I can't do that. It all just comes out as tea without intonation. There are ways around that, but it does mean I need to type more. Would you like tea? Or I love tea. Sometimes I forget. Or sometimes I use body language to supply the intended meaning. The voice synthesizer is an awesome toy, especially if you're interested in that kind of technology. Imagine how awesome it is to make it say things, or how much fun it is to see what it can't say. The urge is irresistible, so you grab my phone and start typing. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here with a big frown on my face, frowning because I cannot speak, because the toy you're holding, that's my voice, because making this toy say things, that's making me say things. You're the puppeteer and I've become your puppet. This goes for any accessibility device. Not everyone gets this. I think it's important to mention this. No touching. Speaking of speaking, did you know that speech is really fast? You may not have realized how fast it actually is. People speak at roughly 200 words per minute. This is a lot faster than you can type. My typing speed is around 80 words per minute on a physical keyboard. Typing on my phone is even slower. Let's have a taste of that. I'll switch to typing each sentence I want to say. In order to speak, I need to type the entire sentence first. When I hit enter, the sentence comes out.
Notice that there is a lot of delay between each sentence. Now, you may wonder if I can speak each word as I type it. It turns out that is not ideal. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the stenographer who does the subtitling can type a lot faster than you can speak. <laughs> Do you remember the time when your co-worker and you met in the hallway, and they were like, how are you? And you said you were fine, and asked them how they were doing, and they said they were fine too, and you did all this without having to slow down your walking speed. For me, answering the question takes a bit of time. I have to grab my voice from my handbag, unlock it, and type in the response. By the time I respond, my co-worker is already out of earshot. It makes office small talk a bit of a problem. And these interactions may seem minor, but since people are a social species, these interactions are important. They make you part of the group. Since I cannot possibly react fast enough, I have resorted to just waving. So if I wave excitedly at you, that's me saying I'm grand. I use my phone to speak. My phone is my voice. When my voice stopped, I needed to find a replacement, and I needed it fast. I looked into a few options, like using my phone and my laptop. I really like using my phone, since it's small. My phone, however, does not have the nicest keyboard. Part of that I solved by downloading an alternative keyboard that enables me to type faster, but I'm still not very fast at typing on my phone. For bigger conversations, I needed a real keyboard. So I have a keyboard hooked up to my phone. The keyboard is actually an Apple keyboard connected to an Android phone. It works and the keyboard is really thin, which makes it easy to drag around all day. Originally, I thought of using a USB keyboard powered by the phone, but the Bluetooth keyboard means less wires and I can put the phone in the middle of the table if I am with friends. Since everything is battery powered, I need to ensure I have enough spare batteries with me. Especially the phone takes a lot of power. A heavy day of conversation will actually drain it completely. So having a spare external battery handy is a requirement. In the case of complete technical failure, I also carry a book and pens with me. I've been lucky enough not to need it, yet. I need an app to speak. Initially, I used an app that someone else had written. It allowed me to enter text and then hit a button to have it spoken. With the keyboard attached, this meant I typed on the keyboard, but when it came time to speak, I had to move my hand to the phone. This was workable, but not great. Since I sometimes claim to be a programmer, I thought I could do better. So I wrote my own application that I'm using. For this talk, I'm actually using something custom built for this talk. Again, I needed something fast. In fact, if I need to change anything on this talk, I have to recompile it. 
It probably helps that I'm usually on the inflicting side, but I love doing interviews. Or maybe I should say, loved, using the past tense. I did have one interview that I conducted, while being non-verbal. I had a co-worker back me up, since I foresaw problems. It was accidental, the recruiter had forgotten I couldn't speak and scheduled me. It was a disaster, or it would have been, had I not had my co-worker with me. I had a lot of trouble explaining my questions, and it is bad form to be terse when asking questions. It took me so long to type, that the candidate, who was likely already nervous, kept trying to fill the gaps by talking. This is actually the thing I miss the most of not being able to speak. I really miss doing interviews. Although I guess the candidates are happy about this, as my interviews are tough. This is a joke. <laughs> Meetings are important for me to do my job. Part of my job requirements is being a good communicator. A lot of my work involves talking to people, often through a video conferencing unit. Remember when I demoed my typing speed? It takes me a lot of time to type a sentence. This makes it hard to interrupt someone. During normal conversation, people leave small pauses during which another person can grab speaking rights. Those pauses are very short, since people can start speaking quite fast. You don't actually build the entire sentence in your head in advance, like I have to do while typing. Because I'm not fast enough, I miss the timing window. Furthermore, my time between sentences is so large, that it gets misinterpreted. It sounds like I'm done with speaking and someone else is to take over. While in reality, I'm just busy typing the next sentence I want to say, and simply haven't finished yet. Since my voice is synthetic, it is also more difficult for people to comprehend. I can't support you with lip reading. The timing of words is not the same as it would be with spoken words by a verbal person. This means people have to concentrate harder to understand me. When I speak, no one else must speak, so others can follow me. The communication channel has to be sufficiently clear for others to understand me. All the meeting rooms in my office use microphones to pick up verbal people. I never know how well those microphones are at picking up me. Since there's no way I can plug my phone directly into the audio system, I place it next to the microphone. I worry there is still distortion, making it hard to follow me. In some cases, this has caused problems, where the microphone didn't pick up my phone voice correctly. In most conference software, you can share your screen. But you can't share audio. Not even if the software runs on my phone. The only option in that case, is to hope the microphone of the phone picks up its own output. Most companies work hard to prevent that, as it introduces cross-talk, when you use the phone hands-free. The most awesome meetings are when a co-worker keeps an eye on me and explicitly calls that I have something to say. And then everyone allows me the space to say all I have to say. I have an awesome co-worker who does this, but they are rare. So if you're in a meeting with someone who needs accommodation, keep an eye on them and include them. We had an office party at work a little while back. Our office manager did a great job. There was food, drink, a karaoke thing and a lot of balloons. I like balloons. It was really successful. People were chatting amongst each other in groups. There was music from the karaoke machine. People were using the karaoke machine and singing. I know, because I observed. Part of that is just because I'm terrible at parties. But the other part is that I need to have both hands free to be able to speak. Ideally, I can sit down. Ideally, people can hear me. The noise was loud. My phone can't produce that much volume. 
I could not even hear my phone speak for me. Typing and showing works in one-on-one -on -one conversations, but in a group it quickly gets awkward. I failed to participate, so I left. I don't think that my failure to participate is fully attributable to not being able to speak, though. It did cause problems, since I needed to find tables to put down my drink and put down my keyboard. But a large part of it is also that I am oversensitive to sound. I probably wouldn't have managed if I had been able to speak either. When people notice I use a speech synthesis device, there are a couple of reactions. Some people seem to go into mirror mode, where they stop speaking because I don't speak. They stop speaking altogether. I've actually had a taxi driver who pulled on my shoulder to get my attention and point at the meter instead of just saying how much the fare was. It's annoying when that happens. I can't speak, but I can hear. The easiest way to get them not to happen is to force them to speak. Strike up conversation and ask them questions that require a sentence to answer and then respond to that sentence, so they realize I can hear. Another thing that happens, is that people don't want to talk to me. This is because they're nice and they feel bad if they make me type. Please, 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 don't be that kind of nice. You may think you're doing me a favor, by not making me do something difficult. But in the process of doing that, you're excluding me. Having a chat is nice. I like talking and I like listening. I also like it when people ask questions. So definitely come and have a chat with me, if you want to.